Hello and welcome back to our first example video of nodal analysis. First of all, before we begin, if you haven't watched our introduction to nodal analysis, it's worth watching that first before you watch this video because we're going to jump straight in where we left off really to show how we can solve some of the equations that we can set up using the method that we've looked at in that previous video. So it's worth going back, as I say, to watch that first to understand the method and where these equations have come from. But in this particular example here, we're going to look at a very similar circuit actually to the circuit that we saw in the introduction video, but this circuit has some uh, circuit values, some resistances and currents. And so what we have here is something that's going to represent um, or be represented rather by a system of equations that looks very much like the system of equations that we derived in our previous video. And these equations are going to look something like this. So what we have here is, we'll just go through them very quickly. Um, at node one, we have a current that's applied to that node or, or, or feeding into that node of two milliamps or two times 10 to the minus three. And that's equal to the voltage at that node. And these voltages are unknown, V1, V2 and V3 are representing these voltages at these points one, two and three, these nodes in our circuit. And we have um, here V1, the, the voltage at that node, divided by the um, Im impedances or resistances in this case directly sort of in contact with that node. And we give these as being in parallel with one another. Um, so in this case we have 6k and 5k directly connected to that node and so we have 6k in parallel with 5k on the bottom there. From there and again we, we sort of discussed this in much more detail in the previous video but from that point we're subtracting um, these paths that take us from uh, the node in question to the other unknown nodes two or three and so here we have a path via this 6k resistor to the voltage at node 2. And so we subtract V2 over 6k. And we also have this path that takes us from our node 1 to node 3 via this 5k resistor. And so we're subtracting V3 over 5k. Uh, our second equation, we're setting up in exactly the same manner. Um, this formulation of I equals V over R. Um, and so in this case, are there any currents applied directly to this node? Well, there's not. There's no current sources directly connected to that node. And so we have zero here. And again, we've set that to be equal to, first, let's look at that V2 term first, the voltage at node two, um, which is the node in question now, um, divided by these parallel impedances, whatever's connected directly to node two. And so we have six, two, and four K all in parallel here. And from that, we're subtracting uh, these paths to other nodes. We can go from uh, node two to node one via this six K resistor. So we have this minus V one over six K. And we can go from node two to node three via this four K resistor. And so we have minus uh, V3 over 4K. And again, we mentioned in our previous video, we don't really refer to this node zero once we've defined the reference node. We don't subtract V0 um, over 2K because we've already defined this reference node as being at zero volts. Um, and it's, it's at, at ground here. And so really we'd be subtracting zero. So there's no point really in adding that to our formulation here. We can, we can leave it as it is. Notice though that I've, I've reordered these terms um, in order of V1, V2, V3. Um, and that's just for, for consistency's sake. And it helps when um, solving using some methods like matrices and that kind of thing. It's, good, it's a good habit to keep these terms in order. Uh, very quickly, the last node here, node 3, our equation at node 3. Again, um, we'll do them in order. So we're subtracting anything that takes us from node 3 to node 1, um, which is where our first 
term comes from here, v minus V1 over 5k, because we can go to node 1 via this 5k resistor. And so we're, we're taking ourselves away from node 3 to node 1 via this 5k resistor. So we have minus V1, the voltage of that node, um, via, uh, divided by 5k. Similarly, we can go from node 3 to node 2 via this 4k resistor. So we're subtracting V2 over 4k. And then we're at node 3, which is the, the node in question. Um, the voltage is going to be V3 at that node, uh, or what we'll call V3 for now. And that's divided by these parallel impedances, whatever's connected directly to node 3. We have 4k and 5k in parallel. So just a quick um, side note before we continue on this sort of uh, double slash notation that I've been using here. And I use this as a shorthand for resistors in parallel. So it, rather than writing this out in full, uh, it just helps to, to, to keep these equations a bit tidier. But in practice, we know that if I was to write R1 in parallel with R2, what I really mean is something like this, the, the reciprocal or one over the reciprocal of R1 plus the reciprocal of R2, or we could write something like this. Um, three resistors in parallel, let's say we had R1 in parallel with R2 in parallel with R3, we would see something like this. And we're going to apply this here because we have some instances where we have parallel resistors in our equations. Um, let's just handle those separately actually, just down the side here we have um, an instance where we've got 6k in parallel with 5k, so 6,000 in parallel with 5,000. And that gives us um, 30,000 over 11, just to keep that as a rational number in fractional form there. Uh, we have 6k, 4k and 2k in parallel, and that comes out as... 12,000 over 11. And we also have a case of 4K in parallel with 5K, and that gives us 20,000 over 9. So notice for each of these, I've retained these as rational numbers in fractional form rather than converting to a decimal, which would give us a bit of rounding error. And actually, it, it makes things um, a little bit easier to rearrange in just a second. Um, so now that we've calculated these parallel resistances, Let's pop those back into our three equations here. But now you'll notice that these parallel resistances are in the place of my shorthand from earlier. So one thing you'll notice here is that we've got these sort of um, what are called complex fractions, a fraction which involves a fraction. Here we've got um, a fraction as the denominator of a fraction. And this is a bit untidy we can simplify by remembering the following rule. We can put it in this form here. If we have A over B over C, then we can rearrange that into C A over B. So if we follow this rule, we can um, rewrite these equations to look like this. And hopefully you'll see they're starting to look a bit tidier now. Let's simplify things a little bit more. Let's multiply everything by a thousand. And I'm doing this for two reasons. It will hopefully um, make these denominators a bit smaller here. And it will also get rid of these um, times 10 to the minus 3 terms on the left hand side as well. So we can multiply everything by a thousand. We're allowed to do that. Um, providing we do the same thing to both sides of the equation, we get something that looks like this. So these equations are exactly the same equations we started out with really, but you can hopefully see they're starting to look a bit tidier now. And notice that the left hand side here is no longer in milliamps. Um, 10 to the minus 3 has disappeared because we've multiplied by a thousand. So those cancel out effectively. We can continue this process by looking for a common multiple in the denominators of each equation. So Let's take, for example, this first equation here. It has denominators now of 30, 6, and 5. Well, 30 is a multiple of each of these terms. Um, there's 30 goes into 30 once. Um, 
6 goes into 35 times and 5 goes into 36 times. So let's multiply everything in this first equation by 30. And similarly, we can do the same uh, with our second equation here. We can multiply all the terms in the second equation by 12, um, because 6, 12, and 4 all go into 12. We could multiply all the terms in the third equation by 20, because 4, 5, and 20 all go into 20. And so again, providing we do the same thing to both sides of the equation in each case, we get something that looks like this. Now, really, we've got the same equations that we started out with. Um, we still have the same problem that these voltages are unknown, but hopefully you can tell that these equations are a little bit more manageable and easier to work with now, just by taking the time to multiply um, each equation by these sort of common multiples. Notice as well that we could only really do this because we kept those parallel resistances in fractional form as rational numbers. If we'd say we took that uh, 20,000 over 9 that we had from earlier, let's say that we just turned that into a decimal and rounded it to two decimal places, this whole process would be uh, a lot more difficult. And so we've got this advantage by leaving things as rational numbers. We can actually simplify things more than, than we'd originally expect when you look at those original equations. If you've already been following our videos on mesh analysis, uh, you'll hopefully guess what's coming next. It's to present our system of equations here in matrix form. And that's going to look something like this. And the method for solving such a system of equations to find these unknown values, these voltages V1, V2 and V3, the voltages at those three nodes, is exactly the same as those we've seen in previous videos. We're not going to duplicate them here, but if you're watching on YouTube, I'll link uh, these videos below as well. But we can solve by methods using, uh, such as Kramer's rule, uh, Gaussian elimination. Uh, we can use an inverse matrix approach. We can solve using simultaneous equations, or we can solve using some kind of computational approach. Whichever of these methods that you use should yield the same results. And for the purposes of this example, um, we actually find the results as follows. We have V1 is minus 16 over five, uh, V2 is minus four, and V3 is minus 180, 188 sorry, over 15. And they're all in volts. Uh, or in decimal uh, form, these are in, in sort of fractional form as rational numbers, but we could round those to decimals and we get minus 3.2, minus 4 and minus 12.53 volts. If you're not sure where those have come from or you want to see how you would work those values out for yourself, then I would suggest uh, having a look at one of our videos on the inverse matrix approach, which would find these results, or the Gaussian elimination method which would also find the same results as well. In our next example, we're also going to do a similar method to what we've done here, but we're going to solve the equations in the video by using a method of simultaneous equations as well. So I hope you found this video useful on setting up a system of equations and simplifying them down from the circuit that we're given in order to form this um, system of equations as a square matrix. We have this three by three square matrix here, uh, which we can then solve to find these unknown values.